right, folks, this is part three of Ryan Bigley of Soundbite Sport Fishing talking about strategies and techniques for catching coho salmon in the Puget Sound. The Puget Sound is stuffed full of salmon right now, and now's the time to get all of your tackle together and organized and make sure you're prepared to get on the water and catch fish effectively. This fish is one we caught yesterday morning. A um, buddy of mine from work convinced me that we needed to go before work yesterday. So there's some good ones starting to show up. I think it was about 12 pounds. Um, so it's a pretty nice one. I wish that uh, I would change the color of the text here. So herring strips under your squid. This is no questions. If you're going to go out in the bay and you're going to fish a squid or you're going to fish an ace high fly, you need to have a herring strip. I, I would have no confidence. I'm not saying you can't do it, but I would have no confidence if I didn't have a herring strip. So the first, the first bullet there says two fillets per herring. I use green label herring and I don't try and get 15 fillets out of each one. I, you know, what's six bucks? We all have boats, we all have a lot of things. It seems to work pretty good. Two fillets out of each one. This is something that you can use your older bait. If you got some bait that's got some scale loss, that the eyes are all foggy on, they're bloodshot, something that's not prime bait, this is something you can use it for. This is about the scent. It's not about having a perfectly good scales and all that. Um, I layer it in rock stall so it gets a little harder and I store it in the fridge. You can just put it in the fridge and it'll stay for a month if you wanted to. So I just kind of rotate. I keep a couple in a box and keep going. That way if I get the urge to go in the morning I can just grab it and go. So here's how I cut it. Green label herring. And then I just fillet it lay both sides and then I use a pair of scissors and cut that little pennant shape. The top of my pennant is about a half inch, three quarters to a half inch wide. The pennant's probably three inches long. Um, and then I just layer that in rock salt. So I get a little Tupperware container, put about a quarter inch of rock salt, herring strips, quarter inch of rock salt, herring strips. Um, and that just toughens them up. They stay on the hook a little better um, and it's real productive. Uh, I fish it for blackmouth, fish it for summer kings, fish it anytime I'm fishing a squid. I will warn you that if you start fishing for summer kings and the dogfish show up, this is a dogfish killer. You will not get your rod down to where you want to fish before a dogfish bites it. Chances are. So this is one time where I'll switch over and really start fishing a lot of spoons or I'll try and fish a squid with nothing. So. The, the, the bait is, is a huge, huge plus for me. So that's what it's going to look like. Um, I just put it about a quarter inch back right here. It's come about a quarter inch back right in the middle and just hook it one time through the top hook. That's all it takes. The squid's going to cover it up. You don't see, I don't have the squid pulled all the way down here. But the squid's going to cover it up. Maybe this much of it. it's going to be hanging out the back. Um, if it looks real funny to you, if you've got a whole bunch of herring hanging out the back, cut it off a little shorter. Make it so it's only two inches long. It doesn't have to be real, real big. Um, and it's in there for the scent. Uh, so that seems to work real well for me. And, and if there was one thing that you decided to change when you were fishing out in the bay, this would be the thing right here. Add a herring strip. Take some time the night before. I like to set my bait out let it thaw for an hour to an hour and a half, and then fillet it. It's still a little bit frozen, a little easier to do, a little bit easier to deal with. You don't get quite the scale loss, and it's not all mushy. And then just put them in the fridge or put them in your cooler in your boat so you don't forget them, and they're ready to fish the next morning. And I can fish four rods with a dozen baits, you know, a dozen herrings, so 24 strips almost all day. Now out in the sound, Fishing's pretty good, so I'd probably go with a couple dozen if I had four or five guys, but uh, it's, uh, this is the way to go. Spoons, Silver Horde, I've pretty much switched over to a lot of these as opposed to the Coyote ones, but uh, these, are, these are a pretty good product. Uh, the Kingfisher Lights, Coho Killers, I'll be honest and tell you that I've caught more King Salmon on Coho Killers than I have Coho. But uh, 
I also fish them a lot more for kings than I do co. So that's a good way to go. Uh, again, lighter leaders here, 20 to 25 pound. And this is where I really started fishing the fluorocarbon and seeing a difference in my spoons. Um, and I kind of have transferred that over and stuck with it in the squid. Um, scent on the back of your spoon every 20 minutes. It's pretty standard across the board. If I'm going to go out fishing in the bay, I'm going to make sure and check my rod every 20 minutes. There's shakers, there's flounders, there's everything. You don't know what's going on down there. And it's worth checking. When I say every 20 minutes, I pull it up, take a rag and wipe the old scent off and reapply, put some new scent on. And as far as scent goes, the scent that's been sitting in your boat for a year and a half, two years, three years, and it's all separated, it's all clear jelly on the top and kind of a goofy brown color on the bottom. I have a lot of that and uh, throw it out. I, <laughs> I've had so much more success this year after I change up and get rid of that old stuff. It's worth it to spend five bucks and get yourself a new thing of scent every year um, and do it. Herring is a, is a go-to. If you had to pick one, I'd probably pick herring. Shrimp is real good, and anise is another one. So, cohos, some keys. Cover ground. You can fish fast. If you don't see fish, if you don't see bait, if you don't see people catching fish, you can cover ground. You can put in at Muckleteo and troll all the way to Port Townsend if you wanted. No problem. You could go down and around possession. You could go everywhere you wanted. And I guarantee that if you did that for a day, you'd catch your fish. Um, so you can fish fast. You can fish five, six miles an hour if you want. There's guys do it, and you see them catch. So keep going. Um, start shallow. In the morning, start with your gear at 30 or 40 feet. As the sun comes up, work down. You don't have to be down at 150 feet right away. But don't be afraid to go that deep. If it's 10 o'clock in the morning and the sun's high in the sky and you see fish down there at 150 feet on your downrigger or at 120 feet, put it down there. They have tails. They swim. They're still down there. Um, pay attention to the electronics and other anglers. Again, if you see fish down there, pay attention to those things. I know there's a lot of commotion when you catch one, but if you can just take a minute when you see your rod pop off or your, somebody grabs the rod, to look at your fish finder and kind of remember what the screen looked like when you caught one, where you were, was there something on the screen when we got a bite, things like that. You'll learn to use those things a lot better. Don't fight the current. This is a big one that you can benefit from in the sound. You'll see a guy troll. It'll take you two hours or an hour and a half to get from Muckleteo to the shipwreck. And then you turn around and you troll for an hour and you all of a sudden realize that you've only made like 200 yards of ground. You've been sitting there in the current, not going anywhere. So pick up your stuff, run back, and troll back down with it. Don't fight it. That's not to say that you can't do a donut when you catch a fish and try and get back on those fish. But if you're fighting it, and you're not making any headway, and you're not covering any ground, pick up your stuff, put your downrigger weights in your boat, get everything up, and run back up. Stay with the fish, not the boats. Again, pay attention to your electronics. When you see a guy catch one or the boats, if you watch during the day, everybody starts up at Muckleteo, starts in Edmonds, and as the day moves on, everybody gets pushed out. Everybody just moves further and further away. There's nothing to say that those fish that you were catching at 6 o'clock in the morning or 7 o'clock in the morning aren't still up there. Pay attention to that. Colors. Green, glow, red, purple, and anything in UV. So that's it as far as the silver stuff. Bait. So I'll, I'll fess up and say that this is from a Springer seminar. So that's why my herring here is chartreuse. But uh, I, I will say that I have caught fish in the bay on dyed herring. But uh, if you're going to fish bait, brine it, rock salt and water. Uh, brine and bright and water. They've got some great new products out now that just come in the jug, pre-mixed. You can pour in a container and put a dozen herring in or two dozen herring in, and it's just thoughtless. Um, and all that stuff works. Um, 
If you're going to fish cut plug or a whole herring out in the bay, I like red label. It's a, it's a smaller size. Green's the next size up, but uh, both of them work real well out in the sound. Um, one of these little miter boxes is a pretty good way to go if you're not a real big herring fisherman. Um, you know, bait's not cheap, so uh, getting a good angle cut on that is a real good thing. So a sharp knife and getting one of those little miter boxes, I think they're like 10 or 15 bucks. And it pretty much guarantees you that you got a good, a good bait each time. Um, that way you're not wasting, wasting your time with that. Rigging a cut plug. Um, again here, if I fish in the river, I cut the tail off because I'm fighting the current sometimes. But uh, you don't have to do that. I just put the front hook. This is just kind of a Westport style. So I put the front hook right through in, from the gut cavity up and just come out about a quarter inch, three eighths of an inch back. I really don't hook the whole thing on there. And then I just hook this, t this trailer hook. I come in through the gut cavity and out the side and just let it trail behind. I don't bury it in the bait or any of that. The key here is you want a tight spin. At the king roll, the slow, big, wide roll, you don't want that. You want a tight spin, no matter what you're fishing for. If you can fit that in the same diameter of a beer can or a soda pop can, tight spin, that's what you want. That's what you're looking for here. Um, if you're going to put your cut plug down on the downrigger, you need to salt it a little heavier. You need to have it a little bit firmer. Um, but this is a great thing to use on this lead rod right out the back. Put it out 30 feet behind you. And you, you'll catch fish, for sure. I use fixed. I tie my own leaders, and I tie fixed ones. Um, I've, I'm pretty standard on the bait that I fish. Um, and I haven't seen a, note, a, dis, a difference. I know that some of the guys, if you're going to start using her, some of those herring helmets or things like that and fish full, um, fish full baits, They'll start fishing slips so they can get the right bend in there. But uh, that's it. OK, so locations for silver. This picture was uh, on Saturday morning here before I came to work. We got six with a buddy from work and his six-year-old son. It took us 15 minutes to convince old Braden to get on the boat Saturday morning. He was super excited walking down the dock. And then he got there, and he wasn't quite sure what was going on. And he said he wanted to go home. By the end of the day, he was asking his dad if he could come with us again tomorrow. So he had a pretty good time. I was pretty excited that we waited and were patient with him. So that was pretty cool. OK, folks, that wraps it up for part three. Move on to part four for the last of the information that you need to be successful on the Puget Sound for coho salmon.